Okay, so this will be day 23 of the 30-day uh, servo motion project that we're doing. Uh, in day 22, we added our ALMDs, we added our faults. Uh, today, we will be going in and adding, sorry. Uh, today, we'll be going at and adding in our uh, descriptions for our alarms. So basically, we'll be putting in the descriptions for the e-stop uh, relay, uh, the uh, axis 1, axis 2, axis 3, axis 4, into the proper description. So first off, we want to go into the controller tags, and then we want to find our descriptions, right? So alarm 1, alarm 2, alarm 3, alarm 4, alarm 5. Okay, so um, what we'll do in this instance is we're wanting to go ahead and throw in our data. So this will be, we know this is going to be the e-stop. We'll call this system e-stop. Sorry about that, I hit the num uh, number lock on accident. Okay, so system e-stop, hit apply, and we'll spread this out a little bit. So the next instance would be axis one fault. So axis one servo is faulted. And then again, I'm copy paste, right? So I'm going to copy that. Anything that you can make things faster, I strongly believe in doing. So, um, and that goes for that description. This goes for the next description, which is three, and this would be four. Okay, so we now have our descriptions that will pop up on our alarm banner when we have the system uh, working, right? So if we get an alarm, if we happen to get one of these alarms, then that is what will be just based upon the tag. The tag we have in here. This is a um, this is a string. You can see the value that will pop up. What we just typed in. System e stop. Um, <clears throat> number two should be uh, yeah. Servo uh, axis one servo is faulted. Okay, so what we should do at this point is we should go ahead and start the client and this is what I, I wanted to show you so this would be a little little uh, tidbit of information that you will help you out if you have trouble with alarms and events I will actually uh, I'll let the system fully come up before I, I show it um, but if you've seen the videos you know from the start scratch you know we if you look down here we'll have our, our our mat startup macro for our client starting up, calling each screen that we have individually time based so that and auto automatically signing in the operator, signing out of out the uh, engineer. Okay, so the system is starting, screens are popping up, everything's working, um, and you see up top. What we have here is a connection to the controller is not there, right? So it's it's been lost. Um, and to prove that the system is fully working, we'll hit the start button. And the system is fully working. So it's requesting to start. Everything started running. So the actually, we are talking. But the problem is um, we don't have uh, conductivity, and I, there's a reason why. So let's go back and I'll show you. Even if I were to index an e-stop fault right now, and I didn't have to go there to do that, it's not going to pop up here because of the fact that um, we have an RS links problem. And I'll show you that real quick. So if you have this instant problem, if you have this problem happen, and uh, you're not sure what to do about it. There's a tech note that Rockwell has about this. So what you need to do is go to Control Panel. You want to go to Admin, uh, Administration Tools. You want to go to 
um, component services, local services, scroll down until you see RS Links Enterprise. I want you to restart RS Links Enterprise while the system is active. Just rebooting your computer will not fix this. It will on a server based system, but it will not on any other system. Okay, so just to kind of give you the heads up on that. So now that the system is actually reset and we reset the RS Links Enterprise, now let's go ahead and press the e stop. back up it may be still starting so no worries okay there it goes and let's see we should be getting an alarm should be getting an alarm route right now so why are we not getting an alarm Okay, so we did get an alarm, but it did not show, for some reason it did not show the, um, did not show the text, so let's see why. So it's an alarm, and the text is obviously showing, uh, let's take the class out, that's, that's the one we put the class in, so let's take that out. Um, and let's just reset that so tell you what what we can do to let's do this let's we have a fault screen let's go ahead and make the fault screen active so let's go to fault screen um, if you don't know how to do this let me let me just show you real quick okay so the fault screen is blank right now come back and we're going to go to uh, alarms and events summary and just basically draw it out right um, you can change what you want to change on it like if you want um, generally what I like to do is I like to make this bigger up here um, so I'll come in and make the icons by the medium Actually, no, it's not. It's not icons. I'm sorry. Small uh, font size. It's not font size. Okay, it should be. I thought it was the header. So, um, yeah, status bar, medium, large, maybe. No. No, I kind of like to have that small. Um, this should be uh, top position. Okay, so this should be medium. Yeah, there we go. Large. So personally, I like to make that large. Um, then what I will do on the second side to that is I will... Uh, Basically, uh, I'll do a quick test, so I'll save it and just do a quick test. Um, it to show you everything that, that happened. Um, of course, we did not have these trips, so I'm not sure why they're popping up. Maybe because the alarms. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's take this screen that we made it and let's save it and let's come down to the header bar. Not the header, but the main menu. Copy this. Paste. Take this over here. Okay, change the description to alarm screen. Okay, so in the alarm screen, we want to what we want to come back and we'll take that out, and then in the press, we want to go to graphics, graphic display, navigation, uh, display, 
We want to pick our display, so first we need to get in the correct area, which is our, our HMI server. Come into File and pick our fault screen. So now that we have our fault screen there, we are good to go. Then we'll come and save that. And to get this back, we have to restart our client, which is no big deal. Uh, just restart the client. And again, as this stuff starts, and the reason we had to restart it is because the header is a fixed thing that stays on the screen. I mean, you can have a reset if you want to, like a like a refresh at the bottom of the screen or something, like a refresh HMI. Um, you can put that on there too, as well. We may show how to do that too, um, but for the most part right now, I don't have it. So, so now we have our alarm screen on here, and uh, we're good to go. So... What we want to do is acknowledge, refresh. Okay, so now that we've refreshed everything, let's go back and let's do an e stop again. And just like it says, we have the e stop. And we have, you can spread these out if you want to. Um, so we have exactly what's going on. So I'll tell you what. What we should do, just to test everything, make sure all of our alarms are working right. Come in and index all these alarms. So you see, they are working. Now what's happening here, the reason they're green is because basically um, I'm toggling it and it's immediately coming back true. So it's not like a real fault. Um, but you do see that the defaults are working. Um, we come in here, uh, we basically uh, acknowledge, refresh. It's only the, now what's left is only the active alarm. If you press the alarm that's active, it tells you what uh, priority it is, what time it came in, what time it's been acknowledged, uh, it's discrete. Uh, basically the message that popped up, uh, you know, everything about it, it will pop up. Tells you the tags by value, tag values and all that that stuff. So in that instance, we'll come back and uncheck the alarm. It will go away. Uh, we'll come back. Everything is good. And repeat the process just one more time. And this is in the state machine, so you cannot start it. So. So it's basically fault handling. Um, you know, I mean, I could probably, like I said, I could probably do like three or four days on this stuff um, because it, it, it can get really, really elaborate on how well you want to do your fault handling. But the little tidbit I wanted to show you too is is um, the fact that if you're, you're having trouble seeing your alarms and events, um, the number one thing to do is to go to control uh, admin tools component services and again local services and you want to reset or restart you want to restart your uh, HMI or your uh, RS links enterprise so now I've already done that so I'm not going to do it again so uh, but just to show, you know, the system is still fully functional. So uh, we pretty much have a, a active system. Uh, we have fault handling now. We have uh, the system working uh, the way we want it to. Uh, you know, we have our servers up here. We can easily pull down and see the activity of our, our servers. Uh, we have the system running, uh, changeable draws, um, you know, we have our, our graphical displays. We can go back and look at a, a different graphical display upon history. Um, you know, so we have good navigation. And uh, that's just about it. So as far as today, I think that'll wrap today up. We'll finish it out with a, a nice little e-stop. Um, finish it out with a, a e-stop to show it shows what's going on. And um, 
again, uh, so that's that's actually uh, within our 15 minute mark. So again, I, I thank you for your time and your patience, and uh, hopefully this was uh, you know some value added material for you to show you how to quickly get alarms and events working, how to build a screen, uh, how to you know you don't have to add all the stuff in the screen. You can get really really elaborate with it. Um, if we need to, to make another video on that, we can. But for the, the sake of the time limit and uh, what we're trying to do with this 30 day project, we're going to keep it simple. And um, like I said, I think we got a pretty good looking system right now for what we're doing. Um, so I'll conclude with that for today. Um, so again, we'll pick back up on the very next day and um, just keep on adding to it and then we'll get to the point i think we'll we'll actually get to the point where we'll start explaining stuff a little bit more in depth so maybe the last couple of days you know might be a, a good value to uh you know to kind of uh, you know make sure you as a recoup i guess or recap or you know, how, you know however you want to say it so either way uh thank you for your time and uh and uh your support